I'm Lisa Sabania from Life Like You Mean It. And today's video, we are going to talk about how we can heal our third eye chakra with the new moon. Today's video is going to cover three major ways of healing our third eye chakra. And that is going to be including a yoga position that we can do. Second, we're going to look at a regular daily journaling practice that you can do. And third, we are going to look at how you can build your intuition. One of our major things that our third eye chakra deals with. So let's get started. So before we get started into part one, let's just stop right here and take a moment to let you know about a video that is really important to watch that is all about the shadow work that you can be doing for your third eye chakra, particularly in the full moon. If you haven't seen that video yet, then go ahead and whoop, click on it over here. This video is an absolute must, whether you watch it first or whether you watch it after this one. So with that out of the way, on to part one. So the yoga position that we're going to talk about today is child's pose. Now this position is so beautiful because one of the main reasons is because it is bringing your third eye to the ground, allowing you to ground that chakra directly in contact with Mother Earth. So it really is a very beautiful yoga position to do to help you with your third eye directly, simply keep out of contact. Part two, we're going to talk about a regular daily journaling activity that you can do, which is to write down your dreams. Now, the reason why this is such a really important thing to do for your third eye is that it actually stimulates your pineal gland, which sits right in behind your third eye, if you can imagine sticking your finger in there. And it's a tiny little gland that actually does so, so much, particularly now with your intuition, your clairvoyance, right? Your ability to have these types of activities, whether it's clairvoyance, clairaudience, etc. Right, it's a lot of that we are starting to discover the link between the pineal gland and those types of gifts. So stimulating your pineal gland in this way is a beautiful exercise to help you leading up to part three, which is where we're going to end up talking about different things you can do to build on your intuition. But sticking with the journaling for now, let's just look at doing something nice and simple for yourself and you know, a lot of times we end up focusing on the things that aren't working in our lives, right? Things that we would like to be different than what they are. And that's normal. That's how else would you be able to gauge what changes you want to make in your life if you aren't able to recognize those things? We just don't want to stay there. We don't want to keep our focus there. So that's what you want to do with this type of activity is there might be some days that are better than others, right? And those days are days where you have absolutely no problem thinking about all your dreams, all the traveling that you'd like to do. And, you know, if you're not in a relationship, what that relationship will look like when you are in it, you know, what that degree is going to look and feel like once you've earned it, you know, whatever it is that you're talking about. Um, and right down to the small things, right? What it's going to feel like uh, for you to, I don't know, walk in that new pair of shoes that you're really looking forward to owning or something. It doesn't matter. So, of course, on those days, just write out a beautiful list. But don't just leave it to the writing. Allow yourself to visualize it, right? Allow yourself to be kind of a visionary. Imagine what that looks like when you've already achieved it. So as you're writing it down, we're writing it in present tense, not I will have a loving, stable relationship. It's I have a loving, stable relationship, right? It changes that context so that we are right here in the present. We are claiming it for our own, right? Same thing with money and the holidays and the whatever else it is that you would like to put on this dream list. And we do want to add to it every single day. And I don't just mean go back to that first page and add a few other things. I mean, rewrite out the list every day. 
because that brings our energy back, especially if we are not just writing it out, but allowing ourselves to visualize what it's like to already have achieved this, writing it out in the present tense, like we are claiming it. We're redoing that every single day. So give yourself at least a challenge of 30 days of doing this every single day for all 30 days and see how you get on. Side note, if you're loving this, whether it's the video or the entire playlist, as much as I have enjoyed putting this together for you, then I think you'll love what I've got on offer here. My latest program is a bespoke program called Unleash the Goddess Within, the link for which is down in the description. And you can also find it here. And this program is an incredible bespoke six month program where you will work directly with me on a weekly basis. Now, what this is for is for you to be able to take your steps that are right for you on your spiritual journey. So whether you're just getting started and you need that support and that guidance, or whether you have been working through this with quite a bit of experience, but of finding yourself now at a precipice where you don't know what is your next step to take. These are kind of clues that you get from the universe that says, we need somebody to work with us, somebody that will give us a little kick in the right direction, somebody that will open up some doors, somebody that will challenge us in ways that we are no longer challenging ourselves so that we can start exploring and experimenting in ways that we just hadn't thought of before or that we wouldn't do for ourselves. So if you want to check that out, go ahead in the link in the bio uh, or the description rather, or as well, you can check out this QR code here. And I'll take you right to the information. So part three, we're looking at building on your intuition, right? Because the third eye chakra deals a lot with thought and awareness and intuition and that previous video that I had mentioned already, right, about our working with the moon in order to do our shadow work, Right, A lot of what we talked about there as well was the raising your awareness and shifting your perspective on things. And so by doing that, you're already into the healing mode that this video talks about. And so for this, rather than asking you to do the same sort of thing, let's kick it up a notch and let's actually get you to start working on your intuition. Now, for some people, they are well on their way to this. And for other people, they wouldn't even know where to start. So I'm going to address if you don't even know where to start. So if you have never followed your gut instinct, there is a reason why we call it our gut instinct, right? And we, that is synonymous with our intuition. So when we have that gut feeling like, oh, I don't know, I really feel drawn towards this, but it doesn't make any sense. You know, I don't understand it. Those are the times when we can stop and do this very quick exercise. So that is to get yourself comfortable in a chair and allow yourself to not have your full weight of your upper body in the back of the chair because we want to allow for some movement of your upper body. And then you're just going to allow yourself to settle in and close your eyes when you're ready. And then you're going to make a statement. So this is a absolutely hands down true statement. Your name, your date of birth. If you have children, their names, right? If you have a partner, their name, or whatever it is, okay? your address that you currently live at, something that is indisputable. Okay? So I would say to myself, my name is Lisa Savania Gustafson. And I wait and see how my body responds to that. Now, for me, my body moves ever so slightly forward, something that isn't perceptible to somebody else. I've done it on camera before, and you can't see anything move, but I feel it. Once you've got that, that's essentially like your yes. Like I am saying a true statement here. This is right for me. I resonate with this. And you could do it a few more times with some other things like my favorite food is, or, right? I really enjoy long walks on the beach, whatever it is. And just make sure that, oh yeah, yeah, that is definitely a reinforcement. Yeah. And then you're going to do the same sort of thing, but with something that is absolutely not true. So, you know, you could pick some random name out of thin air and be, my name is, and give that random name and see how your body responds to that. Now, for me, I pulled back slightly 
which is why I don't want to have all of my weight in the back of my chair already because I'd have no place to actually move to, right? So I'm sitting up just ever so slightly and I can feel myself just move away from that statement. And then I'll make a couple of other statements. You know, my favorite food is, and I give something I absolutely hate. And, you know, my favorite pastime is, and I give something I really would do anything to not have to do and spend time doing, right? And just make sure that I've got that. And then I play around with both of them, kind of interchange them, make sure that I'm getting the response that my body is saying what is absolutely true for me. And then I'm ready to actually ask some questions of myself. Because it's completely natural when you've got a kind of, you know, that feeling in the pit of your stomach when you're about to try something new, or maybe it's something you tried before, but it didn't go very well, right? or something that you honestly don't know if you have the ability to do. You don't have the skill. You've never trained in this. Whatever it is, it's very possible that that feeling of the gut instinct is actually anxiety that has popped up, which is not the same as your gut instinct. But it happens in the same place for a lot of people, right? For most people, it happens in the gut. And so this is why we want to really understand how our body responds when we are giving something that is absolutely true to us versus something that is not. Because now we can sit back and we can imagine ourselves with this thing already accomplished. We're already doing it and see how our body moves to that. Right, because that same gut instinct might or gut feeling might pop up, but if we're feeling that draw towards it, like we do when it's something good, something truthful, well, then we know that that's just anxiety, the fear of the unknown, perhaps that's creeping in. And if we feel like we're pulling back, then that really was our gut instinct saying, for whatever reason, this isn't right. It might not make any sense whatsoever, but I'm going to pass on this. Right, uh, and so you can start to learn your own cues and build up your own sense of confidence when it comes to building up your intuition. So let's tackle for people that are a little bit more, uh, have more experience with this, with following their intuition. Really beautiful exercises for you can be doing visionary work or journeying type of work, right? So if you uh, have anybody that you follow that does shamanic journeying, for example, I myself am a womb healing facilitator. So I oftentimes bring people through a journey into their own womb space. And we do a lot of work in there. I also do Reiki drumming. And so I bring people through a shamanic drumming experience or journey where they are actually journeying in to find answers to questions or to find uh, you know, their spirit animal, or, you know, there's a lot of different things that we can actually journey into fine. So if you've got somebody like that, then brilliant, you know, put on their YouTube channel, listen to their stuff. Or if you've got somebody you can make an appointment with to do this type of work with, amazing. And if you are trained yourself, then find a way to bring yourself through it. So for example, when I'm doing my Reiki drumming, I'm not going to be able to journey myself while I'm drumming because I'm, I'm keeping a beat, but I'm also keeping timing to bring people back over the bridge and et cetera. And so what I do is I record it and then I can play it back for myself and do my own journey experience. So I hope you love this video as much as I enjoyed making it for you. Now, please keep in mind that this is part of an entire playlist called Working with the Moon. So if you haven't checked that playlist out yet, do that here because we have actually started right from the ground up, almost literally with the root chakra and have got all the way up to, of course, today's video is the third eye and our next set of videos will be for the crown. And there are two videos for every chakra. One with what we can do for shadow work in order to kind of open up the floodgates and allow us to entertain what it is that needs healing with the full moon and then actually going in and doing some of that healing work as well as manifestation work with the new moon. So it's an incredible playlist that you do not want to miss. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, you can do that here or here. And don't forget to click on that bell icon so that you never miss another video. Bless.